Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Nigel, and thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, Block Energy is, of course, an AIM listed company. Um, we listed an AIM back in June 2018, having raised uh, £5 million to execute what we believe to be a, a somewhat low cost, low risk um, work programme. We've just come to the back end of that work, work programme, having drilled a hugely successful well in our West Rastavi permit, which I'll go into a little bit more detail as we move through the slides. Um, I've kept the slides as, um, as, uh, as, as light as possible in the text. I'll be hanging around after the presentation for a conversation if, if anybody wants more detail. And of course, we've left uh, the more detailed presentations at reception if you guys are looking for more detail. So, um, so as touched on earlier, we're a, um, we've got an oil and gas uh, portfolio located in, in Georgia. Um, We've just proven productivity of our flagship West Vestavi permit um, through um, an exceptional test of a hot horizontal well that we recently drilled, um, which was performed in well 16AZ. Um, the economics associated, um, associated with the production sharing contracts in the industry are second to none. Um, I've spent a head of a lot of time working throughout the region and um, the fiscal terms associated with the PSCs in Georgia are some of the best I've come across and I'll go into a little bit more detail. Um, as we move through the presentation. Um, fantastic netbacks. Um, currently we set our crude at 65 at uh, Brent minus um, a small discount. Um, gas sells anywhere between um, seven to eight bucks an MCF in country um, and is in high demand given pretty much 100% of supply is uh, presently sourced from Azerbaijan. Um, current, company's current focus uh, consequent to a recent 12 million pound fundraise that was um, uh, executed last month um, is to, is to uh, continue doing more of the same. Re-entries of existing discoveries, um, uh, uh, drilling more horizontal side tracks for our existing wells, um, and significantly ramping up production. Um, the team is somewhat self-explanatory. Uh, I must say the core team actually sits in Georgia. We operate um, our three fields, and we've got a team of circa 65 people out there, mixed between, which is a mixture of um, skilled local workforce and expats, um, that um, work amongst the Georgians that we source from both Canada and the UK. Um, I myself, uh, I've been working in Georgia since 2010. I've been involved in multiple acquisitions. Um, I've been through the acquisition, development and sale um, of most multiple assets in country. So I guess my specialty is somewhat the above surface environment. Um, Philip Dimmock is our chairman. Um, Phil was uh, spent the lion's share of his career with BP. Um, uh, other roles include uh, Ranger, CNR, where he's also VP of operations at Vanco. Myself and Phil crossed paths in Georgia actually back in 2011. Um, he was uh, looking to engage with um, uh, a local private company at the time and consequent to our engagement he ended up becoming a technical director of a company that I worked with previously in a previous life. So myself and Phil worked together for a couple of years and um, Phil was then in invited to join the, uh, the Block Energy um, creation which occurred back in 2017. Uh, Roger McMeehan is our technical director, um, myself and Roger cross paths again whilst in Georgia. Roger was operating a neighbouring field um, and is somewhat of a kind of re-entry completion specialist and that's what he prides himself on. And uh, given the work programme at hand and Block's focus going forward, I thought Roger would be fantastic to, um, to lead a company from a technical sense and given the most recent success I think he's proved us right in that sense. Um, Niles Tomlinson is a company's executive director. Um, he's an um, energy and mining analyst um, that's been with the company since inception. And Chris Brown um, joined us as an NED um, early part of last year, actually, and um, yeah, spent lion's share of his career with Shell. Um, just a, a, a brief summary on Georgia. So, of course, we're located just south of Russia, north of Turkey. Um, we've got Azerbaijan off to the east. Um, a few points of note, um, you've got one of the world's largest pipelines that transports around a million barrels of crude a day through um, Georgia, through the corridor of the area of interest actually, which I'll, I'll go into in the following slide. Um, that's majority owned by BP and is operated by BP, who have been in country since 1998. Um, you've also got the uh, Southern Caucasus pipeline that transports Chardonnay's gas from offshore Azerbaijan and through the country and down into Turkey, again majority owned by BP um, and operated by BP. Um, the area of interest that you can see highlighted in yellow is pretty much where all of Georgia's oil has been produced to date, actually. Um, 
um, over a couple of hundred million barrels have been produced from that area and that's pretty much where our, uh, our focus to date has stayed. Um, the country is split somewhat in two halves. You've got the Rioni Basin that runs off to the west um, and then you've got the Kora Basin that runs down to the east um, off into Azerbaijan and as mentioned earlier that's been uh, one of the most productive areas to date. Um, this is a yeah. This is an interesting slide, as it gives a a, um, a nice visual on um, kind of where the productive areas in Georgia have been to date. And so we're we've got a hundred percent working interest in Norio. And apologies for the cameraman here from moving away from the, making things difficult for you. A hundred percent working interest here in Norio, and we've got a ninety percent working interest in Sats Kinesi. Um, they're both shallow oil plays that are produced primarily from the Mayakop um, in a shallower zone. So anywhere between. We're producing oil up in Norio at um, depths in and around a thousand meters, there or thereabouts. Um, those of you that have been following the company, we've pretty much kicked off with a work program in Norio and Sats Kinesi, which was a, a re-entry program and just basically re-entering historical wells. Um, and then moving down into the more prolific areas, and we see this to be somewhat the fairway in Georgia actually at the Middle Eocene, um, which has been to date the most productive horizons. Um, these highlighted green areas are the larger fields that have been established in country. Um, this area here is a Samgori field, um, peak production back in the late 70s, um, early late 70s, it um, was about 70,000 barrels of oil a day. Cumulative production from this area alone is around 210 million barrels, all from these zones here, so the, the upper, middle and lower Eocene. Um, there's been some successful gas tests actually in the upper Cretaceous, but I'll, I'll get into that in a bit more detail as we move through. Um, so we're 100% here, 90% here and the operator. Um, we've recently moved to 71.5% in West Vestavi. This is where we've just drilled our most successful well. Um, and we're in the process of exercising our option to move to 100%, which I expect to happen somewhat imminently. Um, often we get asked the question, you know, what's it like to operate in Georgia? You know, there's been some problems in the past. Um, what's it like getting stuff done? I think you know, this is probably one of my favorite slides actually in that clearly demonstrates that um, both above surface and subsurface environment is, is, um, is an area that we can handle in block energy. As you can see, since IPO, we've acquired an interest in West Vestavi, so we've done some commercial transactions. Um, we've mobilized running equipment and crew. Uh, we signed an off-take gas agreement with a local purchaser. Um, we've got busy with our Norio work program, which occurred um, in and around the end of September, beginning of October. Um, we increased oil production in Norio and Sats Kinesi, albeit um, market didn't pay too much attention there as you can see. We went from 10 barrels up to around 60, um, which gets that field break even and kicks off a bit of free cash for the company. And then we moved into our, uh, our sidetrack program in West Vestavi. And needless to say, that's where we got the most excitement and most recognition from the market. Um, forecasted rates at West Vestavi were around 325 barrels. Um, 325 barrels was our, um, our IP. Um, and obviously the test coming at over 1,100 barrels um, a day. Um, we've pretty much doubled the country's production overnight, which was, um, yeah, so we're seen as a bit of a poster boy for Georgia at the moment. We've got lots of support from the government and um, they're making lots of introductions to um, current asset owners and uh, third parties showing interest in the country, somewhat consequent to our success in West Vestavi, I believe. Um, these numbers here are a little bit, um, yeah, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not um, as up to date as we'd like them to be. Uh, we performed a CPR as part of the IPO, proce uh, IPO process in 2017. Um, and these are the numbers that were derived from our positions in Norio, Sats Kinesi, and our minor position in West Vestavi, albeit the PSC had not been issued in West Vestavi at the time in which the CPR had been prepared. So we were going off of somewhat legacy data and we definitely didn't have a successful well in 16AZ under our belt. So going forward, part of the forward plan, outside the obvious, and that's drill more wells, um, the plan is to redo our CPR, and we'd expect quite a significant upgrade to come consequent to that, uh, to that work program. Um, we've got many different mantras internally um, at, Block, um, at Block, but one of my favourites is, uh, you know, our, our focus is, is, in, is on converting contingent resources into reserves. Um, we are taking no exploration risk, we're going back into proven discoveries and we're simply deploying Western technology that's being used in the Western world for the past 30, 35 years um, uh, into proven plays. So we're not doing anything fancy. Um, so a little bit more detail on the license areas, um, which won't take too long. Um, so zooming in on West Vestavi, 
um, and kind of touching on the immediate um, uh, program in which we're fully funded to execute consequence to a 12 million pound raise. Um, 16AZ is where we've obviously just re-entered. We drilled down to 2100 metres and then we drilled a horizontal section in that well of up to around 550 odd metres. Um, plan going forward is we're going to move over to well 38 which will be spudding this summer. Um, I don't know if those of you that do follow the company will see that we've recently upgraded our storage facility so we've now can, um, can store up to 90,000 barrels worth of oil storage. And we've also recently just secured a, a, a 12 month free contract with one of our largest supporters in country. So we'll be spudding well 38. Again, nothing fancy in 38. We're going back into a proven discovery. We're drilling down to around 21, 2200 meters. Then we're gonna drill an up to 700 meter horizontal side track in an attempt to, to increase our um, P50, P90 um, resource and reserve boundaries, basically. Um, post 38, which we think will take us anywhere up to circa 60 days, um, there or thereabouts. We'll then move the rig and the crew straight across to well number 30. Um, 30 is slightly different in a sense that um, 30 is, uh, well number 30 historically discovered some gas. So we're going to go down into the lower Eocene. I should also mention that these two plays that I've just mentioned here are all middle Eocene plays. Well number 30, we're going to go slightly deeper. We're going to retest a legacy gas discovery, which we think will help us convert. Um, what is a pretty significant resource number, which I'll touch on in the next slide. Um, and then we're going to come back up in that well bore and we're going to drill out into the Middle East scene. And then we're going to bring it online as an oil product producer. So we'd expect to have these two wells done um, by the end of this year and we'd expect production to be up to around 2,500, 3,000 barrels a day, there or thereabouts. Um, in parallel to all the drilling activity, we've got a 3D seismic program planned, um, which we hope to have acquired um, by the end of this year. And then that will basically to support the company strategy on its new, new well development program, which on a P50 basis is circa 15 new wells throughout West Vestavi, which just to put things into context is about 38 square kilometres. Um, so here's a, uh, let's go back one, there we go. It's just a simple cartoon on just um, exactly what we did with well 16AZ. Um, it's a fractured reservoir play. We've got the Middle Ear scene for us is around 250 odd metres. Um, well 16AZ was previously drilled down to a depth of around 3,200 metres um, and produced for some time. Um, we basically um, suspended that we plugged off the deeper zones. And as you can see here, we kicked out at 1,925 odd metres, um, landed down at a depth of around 2,100 metres, and then we drilled our horizontal section. Um, as touched on earlier, the, um, the kind of, I'm going to say secondary play, but the headline play for us is proving up the gas resources. We've got a gas, contingent gas resource that's been attributed to West Restavia of 608 BCF, um, which given current local gas prices and now assumed final development costs, um, gives the company access to uh, some significant upside, which is why the focus going forward is on proving up this gas. Um, as you can see, these red dots here basically highlight the gas discoveries that have been had around us. Um, this blue block beside us is owned by, currently owned by Schlumberger, who are 100% energy operator, and they've just finished drilling um, their first gas well. Um, and as mentioned earlier, we're going to be going back into well number 13, retesting a gas discovery that initially flowed at a million cubic feet a day. Now, the difference that we'll be making um, with that particular re-entry is that we'll be drilling a up to 700 meter horizontal side track and we'd expect to increase um, initial production rates significantly. Um, just up into Norio and Saxkanesi, um, given the success that we've had in West Vestavi, um, focus going forward is, is primarily kind of sticking with West Vestavi actually. Um, we've got some recompletions planned and a possible side track planned for Norio. Um, we have got a contingent resource base of around 37 million barrels um, of oil uh, across Doria and Sachs and we've got a, P, a, a 2P reserve number of about 1.6, 1.7 million barrels. So the prize is in Norio and Sachs and albeit they are located in the foothill of the mountains. So the um, kind of access and the topography that we're dealing with up in Norio and Sachs and is somewhat more challenging than down in West Restavi. West Restavi is in the kind of quiet area of the basin, um, it's a, a two minute drive off of a major highway um, and access is, is um, extremely easy. So going forward I think a lot of the resources and time are going to be spent on West Starvey, albeit we'll probably deploy the A50 workover rig into Norio and Saxkanesi and do some simple recompletion work.
Um, so there's uh, there's one of the rigs that we've um, we've we've just secured for a further um, uh, 12 months, and that's our ZJ40 rig. We use that to drill to re-enter 16 AZ, um, quite comfortably get us down to around three three and a half thousand meters. Um, that rig has drilled many Middle Eocene, Lower Eocene wells in country, um, and that's what we'll be using going forward. And there's a, another good picture and a bit of a yeah, nice image on the backdrop of Georgia. Um, so in summary, we're a young and ambitious company with significant re-rating potential. We're fully funded to execute a back-to-back -back drilling program over the next 12 months. We'll be drilling at least two wells by the end of this year, spotting our next well in the not-so-distant future. Um, our absolute focus is on ramping up production, proving up um, the, what we believe to be a significant gas resource, um, and looking at additional acquisitions throughout Georgia. Some stats on Georgia, which I'll, I'll leave for now. But uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. So that's Paul Hayward, who clearly takes lots of pictures of oil rigs when he goes on his holidays. Um, questions for Paul? Uh, while people are thinking about those, let me ask you straight away. I mean, obviously, proximity to Russia, political risk, you haven't said a lot about that. Yeah. What are the... Uh, the risks of simply being in this region? That's a, a question we get asked very often, I must say. Um, look, I think the industry is governed by production sharing contracts, to, um, uh, are governed by English law. Um, you know, I was kind of moving in and out of Georgia back in 2008 when there was a split with Russia, and often that's the point that's raised when we raised Georgia. And you know, during that time, the industry wasn't affected. Um, needless, to say, needless to say, you know, you, there's a bit of a juggling act with Georgia um, between the uh, east and the west and most recently there's been a, a bit of um, a bit of poking going on with Russia which um, those that follow BBC News would, will, 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 may have, may have, uh, may have followed but um, in general um, the industry is, is governed by you know, box standard practice and uh, terms of which are governed by English law so you know it's a very comfortable operating environment and I think the previous slide four or five or so kind of shows what you can get done in country in very simple times. Just to put things into perspective, um, when we were going for our permits for Well 16AZ and we submitted our work program um, on a Monday and we had our permits back on the Friday. So, um, you know, in terms of ease of operating, um, the above surface environment is, ex is, is fantastic. And the Agency of Oil and Gas, which is the kind of the equivalent of the OGA really here in the UK, is um, extremely supportive and are uh, purely focused on keeping the industry moving. So. Um, We've, we've, we've uh, had a very good experience today. Okay, thank you. Question over here. Thank you. Um, there's, there's clearly a bit of running room in West Rustavi, yeah. um, and the other two fields sort of have some options there as well. Once you're sort of done with the work programs on all three fields, what, where's next, and would you then move and would you stay in Georgia specifically, or would you look to another sort of Eastern European country? Um, I suppose the question is, what's the sort of grand running room for, for Block? Yeah, what's next? Um, I mean, there's, there's a, you, 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 the success that we've had today is, um, has been interesting in that, so jumping around a little bit, one of, the, one of the reasons that we felt it was important to somewhat um, expedite our initial work program was consequent to the success we had in 16AZ, we felt that if we continued having that success and continued to um, kind of prove up the play, surrounding asset values would, would, would of course start to increase. So, and what's next for the company um, post the plan outlined today? Um, we're, all, we're constantly looking at new ventures and new opportunities, both in country and um, in the surrounding region. Azerbaijan is, is somewhere that we have looked at um, purely because same base and same play, at least onshore, um, is a place that's um, is, is somewhat open to us, but actually we see, you know, we've, we've, we've worked extremely hard in creating a bit of a unique position for ourselves in country, whereby we're now a proven operator, we've got proven success, and we've got all the backing we need um, 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 from the authorities. So there's a lot of run room for us in Georgia, and um, I would most definitely kind of urge people to keep an eye on what we're doing over the short term, and uh, yeah, that will start to take a, a bit more shape. So dancing around your question a little bit, but there's a lot bubbling away at the moment, so... Yeah, so. Okay, and if I could take you right back to West Rustravi and uh, 
If you could give us a sense of how much it's going to cost, uh, what kind of uh, time frame you think for all the projects and the work you're going to do there, and when does that time, when does that work actually begin? Sure. Um, well, we're getting these wells down. Um, yeah, the, the 16AZ um, had a final cost of about $1.5 million, actually. Uh, going forward, we're going to throw a bit more technology at these wells. We're going to go a little bit heavier with our wireline technology. Um, and we're expecting each side track to cost us anywhere between two to two and a half million dollars, there thereabouts. Um, in terms of timeline, how long does it take to get these things down? Um, uh, we was in and out of West Vestavi within 60 days, so the forecast is 60 days yet again, but we'd expect to shave some time off of that. Um, so these are cheap wells, we get them down quickly, um, and we're in a position to monetize um, any production almost immediately. We've got um, production storage, um, which has been made available to us, which has an approved sales point, which we can sell it from almost immediately. Um, and we're in the process of building a central processing plant that will feed, um, that will allow us to feed um, uh, all future wells back to a central point and then sell from that location. So you sell everything in country? Do you? So currently we sell locally. Um, we can sell, we can export at our own, um, uh, at our own discretion. So uh, there's two routes available to us. Um, a, if we sell domestically, there's a local refinery that takes all we can offer and more. Um, they pretty much refine and then, again, sell locally. Um, or we can export to Batumi um, um, to uh, exporters who then sell our crude out into Europe. Great. Um, one more question over here. Um, you had a, a really exceptional result with that well. Um, how do you know that that's now the rule and that wasn't just an exception? So, yeah, another good question. Um, I mean, it's easy to say, kind of standing here today, um, off the back of success, but um, our expectations internally was always 1,000 to 1,500 a day. And how did we get there? Um, if I just, uh, it's always easy to make things slightly visual here, but. Um, so this permit here has, over, has had over 200 wells um, uh, drilled into the Middle East scene. Um, we got the data on all of those wells, we studied all the production data. There's another analogue field which is up in the northeast corner here, um, Ninots Minder field, which is what we based the West Vestavi play off of. Um, and we've got kind of initial production rates in Ninots Minder at least, ranged anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 a day. So we was always targeting anywhere up to around 1,500 a day. but. Um, we thought it was best to, you know, at 300 a day was still extremely commercial. But um, in this market, we thought it was better to be conservative, you know, manage expectations. And if thing coming, if everything goes extremely well, then, you know, all the better. So um, do we think we can do it again? Absolutely. Otherwise, we wouldn't be there. We're not in Georgia to produce a thousand a day, that's for sure. And what are the decline rates? Like, What's your internal assessment on what the decline rate's going to be? So like? our P50 decline rate is um, one and a half percent a month. Um, but we think, based on how we're producing this well currently, I mean, it's, a, it's an extremely strong well that we have in our hands. I mean, it really wants to produce, but we're producing it very, you know, we're being somewhat delicate with it currently, just to, whilst we're running lots of different um, uh, tests to understand exactly how we should produce this thing. Um, but we think at 700 to 800 a day, this thing will plateau. Um, we're expecting a year, year and a half plateau out of it before we start seeing any declines. I'd actually like to just briefly ask Andrew and Graham, because um, I can see everybody, including me, sort of studying these uh, uh, pictures of oil fields and nodding wisely at the angle at which the drilling was going and all the rest of it. Uh, how, how, obviously these are, these are technical matters which uh, you, you have to uh, assess as chiefs along with all the other operational aspects of running the business, but sort of looking at this operation, how you compare and contrast the work you're doing in the countries you're working in compared to what you see here? Well, yeah. If I, if I go first, first yeah. of all, obviously this is, uh, this is onshore rather than offshore, but uh, uh, the process that you know, is described, you know, clearly looking at analogues, you know, drawing, drawing parallels and getting insights from that is clearly, clearly very, very important. It sounds as if the, the work that, uh, that the team are doing is very, very sound and um, Obviously, um, can't necessarily comment on the on the subsurface, but it sounds like it's very well kind of thought thought out strategy. Sure. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.